Hello there. Every, one of the things I wanted to do this year is make it easier for people to learn PHP. Um, all the tutorials on PHP overcomplicate it and everything else, so I, I wanted to do a couple of tutorials on simplifying it and making it easier and more accessible for your common average person to understand and to get through. So uh, what I'm going to do today is go over a basic registration script, uh, nothing fancy. So let's get right to it. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this in here. So what we have here is a config file. When I start a new script, I always start with a config file because especially if I know I'm going to have dynamic content that's stored in a database, I do the config file first. So what we have here is, if you don't know, a dollar sign in PHP is a variable. You can call it variable, whatever you want to. So in Dreamweaver, it color codes things, makes things a lot easier. So I can you know, make a variable named Ryan and have it equal something. Um, mine, I always name my variables relevant. Or I try to name my variables fairly relevant. Um, so right here I have a variable. Localhost is going to equal localhost. Uh, what that means as far as a database connection is, it's going to be, and apparently my dream was acting up. It's showing me an error when there is none. Um, localhost is just accessing your database. Um, that's always going to be localhost. Is that it's always going to equal localhost no matter what. Um, another thing is um, you got to have a database user and your database password. Um, that's just so the script can access your database with those credentials and get into your database to pull information out and put it back in. Then last of all is the database name, the actual name of the database that you're storing information in. Okay, down here we have the connect, uh, which connects to your database. You have to tell the script to connect to the database using your credentials. And then lastly, it selects the database. So you use your credentials and then you select the database name. And um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, there's no reason to go any further than that. That's, that's as simplified as I can make it. And that's still showing me there's an error when there is none. So I guess we'll figure that one out later. Uh, maybe it's because of space and dust. PHP gets funny like that sometimes. And apparently my dream was hates me. So what we're going to go ahead and do, and there it went away. So what we're going to go ahead and do is create a simple registration script. So that's the config file. Uh, any questions about it, leave a comment on my blog or beneath below. All right, so an index page. Um, this is just plain, simple, new file, a header, document type, and the footer. So let's get a little bit of real estate in here. All right, the first thing I do when I create a form, because you have to create a form to register is I use a table. So we'll insert a new table. And let's drag this up here so you can see it. Um, that's why I like using Dreamweaver. It makes it very easy to insert things. Uh, we'll go six rows. Rows are going down, columns are going across. And 300 pixels should work just fine. So we'll go, ahead, go OK and then we'll insert it. Now remember this is the index page. This is the first page that the browser will find when it goes to that directory. So what we're going to want to do is open the form and give it a method, which will be post, and give it an action. And I already created this file earlier. That's going to be reg process, and I will get to that later. .php. And we'll go ahead and close the form down here below the table. Now one of the things I always do, you don't have to, um, is I use a username. I don't always use it, but I like to have one. Just in case. It's better to have something in your database and not need it than not have it in your database and need it. So then we'll go input type will equal text. Uh, confuse myself for a minute. And we'll give it a name of username. Now to save time, I'm going to copy and paste the rest of this in here because YouTube likes to cut them short. So what we'll do here, and I will explain these all. Oh. All right. So what we have here, then I always ask for an email. Um, that's always good for a mailing list or anything else like that. So input type on that, we can actually, with HTML5 release, we can put an email field in there. Um, now, not all browsers support that yet, 
but they will by the end of the year, so I'm told. And we'll get that in name of email, uh, first name, last name, same story. Uh, password, you're going to want the input type to be password. That's what put those stars or black dots in there when you're entering your password. Uh, that's what keeps it hidden. Then last but not least, you always have to have a submit button. So the input type on that will be submit. The name will be submit. The value is actually what it's going to appear as, and I always capitalize that so it looks cleaner. Um, let me get this white space out of here. I don't like white space in my code unless I'm breaking lines. And we'll go ahead and save that and we will see if our form is there. Uh, that's the database. So we'll go ahead and hit refresh. That was from earlier. And that went all the way across. That's not right. I must be missing something somewhere. Ah. Silly me, I forgot to close my form on the top. So, unless you put a closing, what is that? That'll be greater than, I believe. Then you'll get funky looking stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and refresh it. And there it is, lined up like it's supposed to be. So as I was talking about the input type for password in the password field, you can see how it has the black dots in there when you enter text. That's what does that. Um, and you're always going to want to do that for a password field. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to want to process this form and insert it into the database. Okay, so, um, so I declared the action on this is the regprocess.php, which I have this file right here. And what that does is this is going to take all this information and insert it into the database. So what we want to do is since we're working with the database is we're going to want to include, just like that, and they'll put your semicolons, config.php. And that will include the config file. Simple as that. And that way you don't have to worry about including anything else. And that will connect to the database and insert the information. In it. It'll connect to the database and everything else you need done. You have to have that declared before you run any MySQL queries. Um, so the next thing I do when I'm processing a form is I like to declare the posted variables. Now remember, as I said before, a dollar sign is always a variable in PHP. Always, always, always. So we'll go dollar sign username equals oh, that's not equals equals the posted. Our Dreamweaver just really does not like me today. The posted value of username. Now, if you're wondering where I'm getting that username from, it is the name. So the input name is what you put in there. So I'm processing this input type and the name on that is username so it's the posted username and don't forget your single quotes inside of there um, I'm going to copy and paste the rest of that in there to save time and I like to keep these in order so where am I? there we are so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste those in there and that works exactly the same way for the rest of those except for I like to have mine in the order so I'm going to go ahead and stick email under there. So as you can see, the name on that one is email. Name is first name. Name is last name. And that is everything for the form, except for the password. Now the passwords, I always encrypt my passwords for any of my sites you might ever go on or ever see. All my passwords are encrypted. Um, so what I use is a function in PHP called MD5, which MD5 encrypts passwords. Now they say it's unbreakable and it's irreversible. So that's one I like to use. Another one you can use is SHA-1. Um, it's up to you. I just prefer MD5 myself. Uh, but as you can see, that's a dark blue. In Dreamweaver, that means it's a PHP function. So anyway, so we'll MD5, the posted value of the password. And remember, I named that password right there. Uh, the name on that is password. So that will be an encrypted password. So we're encrypting it before we put it into the database. So now the next thing I like to do, well, not like to do, this is, is run the query to insert this information into the database. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I just declared a variable called insert. 
Now this is the way I insert data into a database. Um, there are a couple other ways. Um, I'm going to do it this way just for the sake of time. And that's, those are, should be single quotes. So insert into and the table I am using is called users. Okay. Um, I use an ID with auto increment for users. Um, that just gives each each entry into the database a number. Um, that can be useful sometimes. You don't have to do that. I just do it on all my database tables. So here we put the username. Um, I gave it it's uh, varkar64. That's the length. Uh, email I gave it varkar255. That's the maximum you can have in any MySQL table is 255. Uh, first name, last name, and the password. The same story. Um, if you have any questions on that, just let me know. Okay. So what we're going to do then is insert into users, which is the database table. And you have to put the columns in here. So the columns are going to be username, email, F name, L name, and last but not least, password. And make sure those are in parentheses. So then the next thing is we put in the values. And We'll use parentheses on those. Now this gets a little bit different and I do it a little bit differently than everybody else. So double quotes, single quotes, and two periods. Uh, two periods mean and. Um, it just helps It helps get that variable exactly the way it should be. The actual value of the variable. So that one's going to be username and you're just going to repeat the process. So I'm just going to copy and paste here just for time's sake. Control C and then the next one there is email F name L name and last but not least the password now what you have to do when you're running these queries is you have to make sure that the values line up with the columns. So the username column needs to have the username variable so they're exactly in the same exact place. So these are lined up, the email is lined up, so they're in the exact same place as these. Um, that way the right values get inserted into the right columns. So then what I do is MySQL query and you see how that's dark blue, so that's a function, then just insert. And that will insert the data. So now let's see if our form works. As well it should. So we'll go username, I'll just go Ryan, uh, Ryan at RyanCon.com, and then we'll go RyanCon, and we'll just do a password 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we'll submit. Now I didn't do it till that I didn't tell the reg process to do anything else but insert it into the database. So we'll see if it's there. And if I can figure it, hurry up. Okay. So you can see the username I put in, my email, and there's the password that is encrypted, that I encrypted before I sent it in. Um, as you can see, the ID that I set to auto increment, and I'll put a value of one because that's the first entry in this table. And there's my email, and everything else is in there with the encrypted password. Um, I will go on and show how to do a login form on my next video. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video or it helped you out, um, show your support by uh, subscribing to my YouTube account or subscribing to my blog, uh, ryancon.com. Alright, thank you.